Hunger Shake here with another one of my phone playing chats. Basically a video where I take a topic and we just have a chat about it and discuss what happened or what's good or what's bad. In this case, it is a what happened to kind of situation. And the focal point is Boomco. What happened to them? What was the cause of the downfall? Could they make a return? Now, this would be a topic that I would admit would be better for Boomtendo to take a shot at because, well, he is he is basically the biggest fan of, of Boomco, whereas I'm the biggest fan of Busby. However, I am a fan of, of Boomco, have been for a long time, and I use him basically for stock wars around the house with family and friends, and for me at least, I can still go and I do have a, a modded, uh, I have a modded far shot that I do use as a single shot pistol. And if you go back to some of my old videos, I was on record at that point in time as saying the far shot was the best single shot pistol, period. And let's take a look at it. The far shot outside of the grip, because the grip's small, very small. Outside of that, you basically had a pistol that had extremely accurate ammo, could handle big spring loads and pretty nice to mod with very very good quality plastic better than nerf yes and i do mean that the plastic on this feels like airsoft grade not not nerf level and i absolutely i absolutely love that top prime and it has again it has the benefit of that proprietary ammo i'm gonna get to this a little bit more so I do believe this was part of their greatest success and their biggest downfall. Let's get to it here in a now, second. Now, why would this ammo be a two-sided sword, basically? The two-edged sword of Boomco. It is better. Let's just get that out of the way. It has higher durability, better aerodynamic properties, and it retains more accuracy over longer distances compared to your typical, I mean, this is, yeah, Nerf Elite. Pretty much junk. By all standards of today, and even back when Boomco was at its peak, the Elite Dart was no good. No accuracy. It's light. It could be made cheaply. Third-party companies have showed that. What, what, what would cause this to remain the standard for years to come while this faded away, despite being completely superior? Well, the general population, you know, we as hobbyists here, we're not the biggest portion. We're like this compared to the whole population of consumers who buy foam flinging products. That's why Adventure Force has done so well. Now, there, <sighs> Boomco also, because this isn't cross compatible, you can't fire Nerf darts in Boomco, you can't fire Boomco in Nerf. A lot of people didn't want to have multiple ammos. A lot of people didn't even realize. You know, they they probably bought a Boomco, took it home. They, you know, the general person who, the parent who buys one for the kid as a present, kid opens it, they lose the ammo that it came with, they try to load the Nerf in it, the Nerf ammo, they, it won't fit. It ends up in a thrift store in the next run when they clean out everything. They're like, well, I'm not buying that stuff again because this is also a little pricey. Better in every way. A little pricey. Not not exorbitant compared to Nerf, but it's a little pricey. But what's the problem? Well, the problem is that average person, again, they don't want to buy extra ammo just for that blaster. If you've got... One that I absolutely love, the Twisted Spinner. If this is the only boom code you've got, you've got to buy ammo just for it. So, whether you're an adult or a kid, you go out and you fire it at, at whoever you're playing with. If they're using a Nerf Retaliator and you're using this, okay, yeah, you got shields. Yay! But you can't fire back once you've fired out, out your current stash of ammo. So you got this fun blaster. I mean, it's just, it's fun. You know, it, it, I like that. It's a slam fire, front loaded cylinder, good performance for what it is. 
it's great for close range, but you're stuck. You can't fire all the different variations, whether they're aftermarket or genuine Nerf. They're coming at you. You can't can't load that. And they made no attempt to be cross compatible. So that was a that was definitely a sticking point. See, Busby, and then following shortly after Dart Zone took the huge step of being cross-compatible. Busby did it earlier than everyone. They took their blasters, revamped their whole lineup, made their magazines cross-compatible, made their darts cross-compatible, so that their darts would work in their magazines, would work in Nerf blasters, and Nerf stuff would work in their blasters. That was brilliant. And that's why Busby hit their heyday a few years ago. And... Yeah, I, I'm willing to admit that. Their latest offerings aren't quite as good as like the Sentinel, the Destiny, the Brute, and the Snipe, and, and the Thermal Hunter, and all that. They hit a heyday where they were at the peak. And now Dart Zone has kind of taken that and went with it as well. And now they're kind of riding the, the high, high tide right now. Boomco never did that. They never did. Now, they couldn't necessarily with... Some, with some of their blasters, but every one of their blasters that was clip-fed or front-loaded, they had an option. They could have made the clips fit these and then run adapters in them to fit these. The far shot. Absolutely a perfect example. All they had to do was make their barrel a little bigger so that it would load a Nerf Elite dart and then have a little slip-in adapter to where it would load a Boomco. Would have been cheap and easy. Picture this in the package, and right next to it, it'll say, Boomco Far Shot, compatible with major competitors' ammunition, while also offering an adapter to run our proprietary higher accuracy ammo. Easy to do. I could have pictured that being a huge marketing spiel that they did, they could have done it on any of the front loaders, include the little adapter in, so that the far shot in stock form with no adapter, fired foam. Slip the little adapter in, even make it have like a little neat muzzle brake on it. You know, have it be something that looks like it's a fancy accessory. And then you slip this in for higher accuracy. That would have been a win-win. Boomco could have done that. Mattel owned Boomco and if you listen to Boom Tando, they really didn't put a whole lot of effort into it. Think about, think back to them. You know, the 2014, 15, 16, 17. Did you ever see a Boomco ad anywhere? Anywhere? Seen Nerf ads. I've seen X-Shot ads. Didn't see hardly any advertising. So marketing also played a big factor. But cross-compatibility, I think, is the number one thing that killed Boomco. It's all fine and dandy to have your ammo be the best that there is. If it can't be shot out of other brands of blasters, and if their ammo can't be fired out of yours, you're stuck. Proprietary is good when it's backed up by huge marketing and proof that it's superior. And it's got to be superior enough to get others to convert to it. And then it's no longer proprietary, then it becomes the new standard. Well, unfortunately, Mattel didn't put enough effort into promoting Boomco to showcase how good that this ammo is, nor was it, nor was it so superior that we just had to do away with foam. I mean, that, that's the truth. It would have to have been just so groundbreaking that it took over. And it is very, very good. It's probably the best ammo to come out of blasters, period. But with nothing backing it up, unfortunately, it was going to go the way of the Dodo. And it did. At the end, Boomco was still making some good designs. You had the MA5 that was actually very good. Very good. I like the Twisted Spinner. I'm kind of an oddball. I like the crank horse. This thing is actually really fun. I mean, cranking it out, you have to, and again, you had to watch out because they kept wanting to do these vertical clips. 
and you have to run small clips or it'll just drop straight through, which is a design flaw. They should have made all their clips sideways. Absolutely should have been. If they needed to put them on a little bit of an angle to help feeding, that'd be fine. You know, picture instead of being flat on, if it was coming across at a little bit of an angle downward to help feeding, why not? Then it wouldn't slide through. You put the, the big 20 or 40 rounders, the 40 rounders in this just drop through. 20 rounders, if you bump them, they still drop. I run the little uh, eights in there. I believe that's what I got in there right now, yeah. I got an eight in there right now. But it's pretty cool. They have some very cool designs, very neat. And some of them were still neat and practical. And the pricing of the whole series wasn't above and beyond Nerf. So it didn't come down to price. It came down to mostly marketing and the non-cross compatible problem. So while I used to say the far shot was the best single shot pistol out there, that's actually been taken now by the, the worker Cheetah. But this thing is still very, very good at doing what it does. Offering extreme accuracy and great build quality. And thankfully, I went and picked up as many of these as I could when they hit Dollar General for, uh, I was picking these things up for as little as three seventy-five when they were clearancing them. So I've got a nice little stash. They're mine. I'm going to have some fun with them. I'm even going to do another mod because uh, they're still worthwhile. These especially. This, this blaster especially. I know the MA5 has a huge fan base as well. But Boomco died because Mattel didn't support it and they never took even the smallest attempt to try to be cross compatible. Busby proved that that's what it took. Dart Zone followed suit and look where those two companies are. That's your number, I would put Dart Zone probably as the number one competitor currently to nerf. Busby was the biggest competitor a few years ago, but there's your two biggest competitors to nerf. Xshot became mostly at least cross compatible with the darts. They're not cross compatible magazines wise and that's why they're a distant they're a distant third competitor. Still very good products, but they're doing better than Boomco, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe, someday, somebody will buy out the name, get it away from Mattel, and try to resurrect it. For now, all we can do is try to find them when we can, and buy up the ammo whenever you see it, and then let's hope, and, let's hope that somebody sees you know, this worthy of bringing back. And that's all, that's all we can do. Because now, Boomco's dead and in the grave, unfortunately. So let's hope that that doesn't repeat with any other of the big companies. Because when one competitor can show up and actually challenge Nerf for a short time and then go completely gone, that's unfortunately, that's not good for competition. Competition's always good for for anything because the people who benefit are us the users so on that note thanks for watching this foam flinging chat as long as jake till next time